Hey, Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I'm so excited today because I'm talking to one of the artists. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, like, okay, is this Melody Festival? Is this Pesmaza Eurovisu? Is this UMK? No, I'm going over to Germany and I'm talking to the entry that's giving us Makatsa? Mikatsa? Is that, can I, is, is that, is that what I want to say? And I'm going to say, uh, so I want to call it like gallant because I'm American and I'm thinking like, you know, medieval times, or is it like gallant? Is it a little bit fancier than that? It's, yeah. it's more it's more like gallant. Gallant, okay. So the Fancy. second version is, is, um, is the good one, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Well, I am loving your song. So many people are loving your song. You know, I will say, we know Germany loves the song contest and wants to do well at the song contest. And so what made y'all decide to go, okay, we got this song, let's throw our hat in the ring, or did they approach you? No, they didn't approach us. We we applied like the uh, old fashioned way, but uh, actually it was uh, our manager's idea to apply. She said, hey, well, we've got this uh, song contest going and we'll, we just finished Katze and why just not give it a try? Yeah, and they they liked it, apparently. <laughs> to be honest, we were like, yeah, we were discuss discussing about this a lot because we thought we, we don't fit into that typical Eurovision song contest style. It's That was our... our um, our idea it was like ah, do we do we fit in there is it is it good i don't think the people will like that but yeah we 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 said okay let's go and give it a go and yeah now we're here so it was a good decision <laughs> well i'm glad to have y'all here because i've been bumping the track in my car ever since it dropped when i had my first reaction i nice. was like Ooh, I was like, this feels like cool. Like there's something about the sound that feels, it like feels cool. And it's a very good car song. I will just say like, you know, if you're yeah. cruising, that was very proof. good. <laughs> no. I, I, was no. I, I was wondering how the song sounds for people who don't speak German. But if you say what you just said, I'm, I'm happy. I'm telling you, it's cool. And so that begs the question for me, you know, with your other music, how do you all describe your sound? What, what kind of vibe do you think you give off uh, as a duo? <laughs> Mona, you want to start? Well, um, yeah, when we, when we started working, Paul and me, we, um, we knew we had like a certain kind of Neue Deutsche Welle sound, which is the new, uh, new German wave, which was um, in the, in, when was it? In the 80s, right, Paul? Wasn't it? Yeah. So we like that, but we also like the modern sound. So we call our music retro futuristische electropop, which is retro futuristic electropop in English. That, that's how we call okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I just say, I kind of knew it. That's the one thing about German and like, well, because English is a ger Germanic language, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, so there are bits that people can kind of find familiar. And and I, it's interesting because you see so many entries at Eurovision uh, submitting songs in English. Mm. But, you know, I've always wondered, why not German a little bit? We don't hear a ton of German now. Mm. Uh, yeah. So did that thought cross your mind? And what do you kind of think of German uh, as kind of a melodic language? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not the most melodic compared to uh, languages with more vowels. I mean, English is perfectly suited for singing because we've got these beautiful uh, vowels and we don't have it that much in German, although we do, but not as much. But um, I think the very attractive or like interesting part in German is that our way of pronouncing and the uh, and emphasizing the syllabies a little different and having also more vi uh, uh, varieties in the consonants that makes it kind of interesting also for non-speaking or, or uh, non-german speaking listeners and uh, we actually like german um, for speaking and for uh, uh, singing as well because um, you are always able to have multiple layers in, a, in the meaning with very uh, few words and this is also what Katze is about. <laughs> we're, we're playing with that. In our um, lyrics, we are, yeah, there's always like a double meaning and you 
you get it if you if you speak German, I guess. But I think you would get it also if you don't speak German and you just translate the lyrics. So that's the thing, yeah. Yeah. Well, can we talk a little bit about the creative process uh, for this song and if it's similar to the way that you create normally? You know, do you sort of start out with a melody? Do you have maybe a story that you're looking to tell? Uh, how do you kind of start your creative process? It's... Yeah, it's 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 kind of funny. Well, sometimes I'm just walking around or I'm doing my job and something, and then I get like a, a um, an idea, and I just take my phone and I record it and say, Ah, hi Paul, I have an idea. What do you think about this? Sie ist eine Katze, meow. Ihr dickes Fell pflegt sie jeden Tag. And then Paul was like, Wait a minute, did you just say this and this? Oh my God, I love it. And then he says, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna build something around that. And I say, Yeah, do this kind of rhythm. And Paul catches up and and the sounds, the the, the songs, they they're most of the times they're finished in one or two hours, to be honest. Yeah, like we we try to always catch the moment, like. Uh, Daniel, she's got so many great ideas and she always has a little textbook with sometimes finished lyrics but also sometimes just some catch phrases that appear a little weird but at the same time they sound good or interesting and I'm always looking for interesting sounds also in languages and Mona, she has a very beautiful way of speaking and very intentional always and the way she pronounces everything is very, uh, very subtle and uh, also has multiple layers and is very musical and actually the sound of her phrases how she speaks and sings them um, is most of the time dictating the way the the sound or the song is going to be composed at the end and i work a lot with like drum machines and synthesizers and a little bit with guitar and uh, when we meet for songwriting i just build everything up and we have nothing in our minds and Mona just comes with an idea and I just press record and then start turning the knobs and st start playing some phrases and Mona's jamming over it and a lot of our songs are built like that actually. Yes. Yes. Hmm. How did you all meet? I mean, because that's, I think, always kind of a thing when you're talking about creative process, you know, it's a little bit of the collaboration and so how did y'all even uh, meet each other? So. In, in Germany, there is something that is called Popkurs, which is like a workshop for musicians from all over Germany, and you can apply there once a year. So I applied there as a singer-songwriter, and Paul, he applied there as a drum player, right, Paul? Yes. And then there are like six weeks, and you just you're in a room with thousands of creative people, and then you walk up to each other and say, hey, how about you and me doing some music together and basically that's how we both met so we went into the rehearsal room and um, we started jamming and i don't know two minutes later i i was looking at paul at this random guy i never saw him before and i said listen dude this is it this is the thing let's do something and paul was also it was like a it was like i don't know um how do you the big bang like the big yeah. bang yeah <laughs> okay me. so you ha yeah so you had like this epiphany of like okay no this is gonna this is gonna work yeah this is gonna be cool it was amazing yeah you always have this feeling like you it's with like with everything like with friendship and also like falling in love like if you find these uh this this one particular person that it's just your vibe and and has the same kind of humor or maybe a similar kind of um, communication. Um, it's very easy to get along. It's very easy to speak and it's very easy to make music also. And all together, like it was a very good, a very good fit with Mona and me. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. So with Eurovision, you know, I'm an American Eurovision fan. So, you know, my history with Eurovision, even though it's funny because Lately, I've been asking this question. I'm saying, you know, well, my history with Eurovision isn't that long, but now I'm talking to people who are younger. And so then they'll mention their, their first Eurovision memory. And I'm like, okay, that, okay, that was mine. Um, so, so maybe I shouldn't say that anymore. But can you remember your first like Eurovision memory? Yes, I, I remember I was sitting in front of the TV. I was about seven years old. 
and I saw a woman singing in the TV with a cowboy dress. And I, I, I knew I, I like that, but I had no idea it was Eurovision Song Contest. So 10, 10 years later, I came into the workshop, which I was just talking about, and I met Jane Comerford. Um, and that was the woman I saw in the Eurovision 10 years ago. So she was participating for Germany. And she, I think 16th, she, she, she made the 16th Platz, oder, Paul? Yeah, and that was my first Eurovision memory. And it was like, boom, oh my God, that is her from 10 years ago. I saw her and that was Eurovision Song Contest. Oh my God, now I, the puzzle was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, with me, it was not with Jane, but uh, with the, uh, I think my, my first memory was 2006 when Finland with Lordi won the Eurovision. And uh, during that time, I think it was in fifth or sixth grade, and um, I was very puzzled that they put like rock musicians in monster costumes on stage. And during that time, I just discovered like rock and heavy metal music for for myself. And I was kind of like, you know, like waiting for the bus with my headphones and listening to System of a Down and Chords. <laughs> and then a friend of mine showed me a hard rock hallelujah from from Lordi. I was like, oh, quite nice. So what's that? Yeah, they, they just won the uh, Eurovision Song Contest. And until that, I, I I don't know how. Maybe just from the like uh, collective mind of just children chatting on uh, like uh, in school. I kind of had an idea what the Eurovision Song Contest was, but I was but I thought it would only play like super straight pop radio music. And uh, yeah, so with, with that memory, I thought, okay, it must be a nice contest where every style of music is welcome. Yeah, I mean, I've always said here uh, on my platform that I'm like, this is not the Eurovision pop song contest. People might want you to think that, mm -hmm. but I don't really think it is. And really, if you look at Eurovision over the past uh, few years and recent history, we've got so much diversity. If you're just looking at the winner, I think of Eurovision, you're missing out on this whole sea and chunk of really interesting music and artists. But one thing that makes Eurovision, I think, really unique in sort of the landscape of of competitions and music competitions, because nowadays, I think most of the time when you're watching shows, it's not about the song, you know, it's about really the voice, maybe the person who is singing and, and kind of the vocal. But one thing I love about Eurovision is it's not just the song, it's how you bring the song to life. Now, I know you can't tell us what you're planning uh, to do on stage or anything like that, but can you tell me a little bit of what did your mind sort of go to when you were like, okay, we've been accepted. Now we have to perform this live. What were you, what was maybe some inspiration points and, and maybe what was even the process like kind of articulating your vision to the broadcaster? So <clears throat> for me or for us, it was a big thing that we want to stay true to our style and our vibe because it's the first time that we're working together with tv and with the whole this whole world so we were a bit scared that they want to you know give us clothes and uh, outfits that we don't that don't fit you know that like i don't know a pink flamingo dress or something so we um yeah we we were talking a lot with them and they assured us that nothing like this is going to happen they wanted to know our feelings and um what we think about the song and what's the background so that they could um design a whole show around that so yeah we wanted to stay true to our galant uh, idea and uh, that's 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 how it goes and that's how it's happening next week yeah they're helping they're helping us a lot with that and i mean sure we we don't want to like give some details about what's going to happen uh, it, it has to be a surprise but um uh, we already mentioned that our that, that the meaning of the song katze and, uh, and the lyrics of katze they kind of have the second layer. The first layer is singing and dancing just to see is the katze. <laughs> like this uh, this kind of vibe. But if you listen closely and if you also um, uh, read the uh, translation of the lyrics, the English translation, you kind of guess that it's not about a 
a cat, it's about a person, and like it's a more complex subject, and we try to um, embody and envision this on stage. That it's it, that is not about a cat. It's it's about this second layer and deeper meaning. Also, hoping to uh, like to to give our uh, our show a little more like uh, yeah deep thought i don't know if that's right to say but yeah <laughs> no i yeah. think it's it's layered um mona did you want to hop in no i was just saying yes paul you are right <laughs> that's what i wanted to say no all good all good well I think that Germany has a really interesting national selection this year. You have some folks that have competed to try and represent uh, Germany before. But I do have a question, and I ask everybody this question. So I'm assuming you've heard the songs of your competitors. I do competitors in quotation marks because yeah. everyone's a winner. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, that's, that's right. But, you know, you all do have this unique, I say, like sound is there a song that you feel like, hmm, if we could take that song and put the galant spin on, what song would it be? Ooh. Like to remix, you know, it's not to take their song because you don't, you know, it's just like, oh yeah, I'm kind of feeling that like we could, we could, well, we could do some things. You know, you know, the, the, the galant sound is, um, the main thing is that the lyrics are German. So, 90% of the songs are out now and there is the Marie Reim song which is called Naive that, that's the typical Schlager um, no I don't think there's any uh, Paul what do you think for me no for me no there's no song. yeah it's it, it's it's very difficult because like we we might have this two elements like uh, Mona said we are like writing in German and German has already this whole aesthetic around it and the uh, uh, Marie Reim song Naive it also is a very like German sounding song but the whole aesthetic goes in just just the opposite direction like we are more in this like okay we want to have a deeper meaning we want to have this let's say a little artsy touch we want to have this uh, also like bow to like uh, the beginnings of German electronic music, like with Krautrock, Kraftwerk, and the seventies, eighties, and everything, and um, Marie Reim is like very. It's just the, or not just, but it it, it is a song that is very. Uh, it's about the entertaining part, and it should be like easy, approachable, and uh, so that that a lot of people can feel entertained and everything. And so this also would like miss our purpose of a song. So I think it would work best if we we'll pick one of the English written songs and first translate it and then try to apply our sound and our yeah, setting on that one. That's what I wanted to say. We would translate a song and then do a Galant version. That's yeah. Ooh. But which song? Wow. Which song? Um, I, I to be honest. I have no idea what the lyrics are about from the other songs. Only, oh boy, I think "Oh boy" from Rick is a quite has a quite deep meaning, but I mm. I need to get more into that song. But yeah. I think maybe that would be a song. Yeah, probably. I mean, they're, they're all great songs. They're written mm. just fantastic. Like we like we we really appreciate all the songs that uh, are also uh, in the finals. So I think we we could try it with every sing a song but yeah i think the the one that also stuck to my mind was oh boy but yeah i don't know what, what do you think <laughs> yeah. you know i almost was kind of thinking a uh, marie song i'm like there's a way to take it sort of strip mm -hmm. back the schlager in it mm -hmm. like figure out the loops in it and like coolify it <laughs> you know mm -hmm. like give mm -hmm. it kind of like a little like i think to me, I'm like, there's there's a path, there's a path for that one. But, uh, yeah, but right. I, yeah, but I always love to ask people that question just because I'm like, it's a really good know, question. <laughs> just like, what do you, what do you do? I mean, because I think everyone does have a unique sound, and mm -hmm. so you know, thinking of uh, covering or remixing someone's song doesn't mean you're trying to sound like them. It's like, how do you put yourself in it and sort of evolve the track? 
to fit sort of you. And I, I, I just always find that a curious thing. But, you know, I look at you all as very creative individuals. And, and I, I always try to tell everyone, I think we all have a little bit of creativity within us. And so I don't know if you have like some words that you could share with folks that kind of help you draw on your creative process that you think could help others. Good question. Mm, like in, in, in the pop course, if I may start, Mona, um, like we had this, like we, we had some kind of instructors or like teachers or people that, that, that helped us in the process of just evolving our own voice, actually our own artistic voice. And they, they were all like Jane, uh, Jane Comerford, for example, she was also there. And um, they teach us many good things. And like one person, his name is Kalas, he's uh, a drummer of like very big uh, German uh, pop radio acts. Um, maybe you know Mark Forster, I don't know. He's the drummer of Mark Forster. And um, he back then told me that I really need to stick to what I like and love in music and don't worry about if it's gonna fit to to what's uh, what's just on vogue or what's just trendy and everything I just need to stick to myself and the right people are going to find me not the other way around and that was something that changed my whole life actually so thank you Carlos for that and Mona actually found me, so he was right. <laughs> when I started to make my music, I discovered always when I think it's too weird, it's too strange, I can't, I can't use that the lyrics. It's it's too weird. It's it, the people will roll their eyes. Exactly, that's the way I had I had to go, and exactly that's how we both could create a new kind of music and and something very unique because it's absolutely true to our hearts and our yeah our feelings and um yeah if the people roll with their eyes i think uh, everyone who's creative made a good job I, I, I think that's you know then you know it's 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 new and it's it's real it's nothing that people want to hear want to see or have seen a million times it has to be strange well i yeah. agree with that i do think art sometimes has to be divisive if it's just universally accepted like is it really art or is it just reflecting uh mm. what we already are and palpable well thank you both for talking with me today i know there's a lot of people who are really curious to see what you're going to serve on the stage so thank you so much yeah, yeah. thank you thanks for having us that's a nice yeah. interview really yeah, I really liked yeah good questions thank you <laughs>